Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually going to be unboxing my supply haul that I got yesterday. So this is kind of representative, or a little bit representative, of a small soap maker haul. So it's, let me just say, it's not much, but I did uh, get a few things. So first of all, I got these little cups here. I don't know if you can see them, but they, um, they're good for, I don't know, mixing cups and stuff like that that are pretty disposable. Although I'm not really huge on like uh, plastic disposable stuff. There are some instances where I, I just, it's better. I got some, um, I'm really excited about this. So these are just eight ounce Boston round tubes and they come with the little sprayers. So I have the sprayers in there as well. I'm going <clears> to <throat> make a video on how to make um, sprayable lotion. So this will be for that. Okay. Some of the fun stuff. I got uh, more of my white champagne mica because I use that a lot. I got a different kind of yellow. Um, so I have Sunday Fun Day, and it's a very light lemon yellow, but I wanted something a little bit deeper. So I got this banana boat yellow. Um, this is Boombox Blue. So I, I don't know, I was kind of curious about it online. It kind of looks like my Key West Blue that I got from Mad Micas. And just so you know, this is all from Wholesale Supplies Plus. <clears throat> Uh, French White Shimmer Mica. I was curious about it too because you could see, I mean, maybe the camera doesn't do it justice, but it's just compared to the white uh, champagne, it's like way sparklier. So that's that'd be like a cool thing to have like as a topper or something or uh, a mica swirl. Um, and then I've got Emerald Green Mica. So <clears throat> while I'm not like a huge fan of green color, like it's not one of my favorite colors, I do love Emerald Green because it's kind of got a cool blue tint to it although this one here looks more yellow but it's still kind of a cool tone so I'm really excited to try that and it's also a little bit more sparkly than um, you know typical matte mica okay so now I have a few things in here as well um, I just wanted to try this usually when I make lotion I make it from scratch so like literally water emulsifier oil etc but <clears throat> Wholesale Supplies Plus was having a President's Day sale, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it. Why not? And see if it compares to my handmade lotion. So I got this head-to-toe lotion, and we'll see how that works out. And maybe this will end up turning into a, um, a spray as well. Um, I got, I, well, I replenished uh, some of my cocoa butter. I normally get the uh, little wafers. Um, this is like a big chunk. And the reason I didn't get the wafers this time is because the price went up, so I just was like, well, I'll just get the chunk and... I'll melt it down and um, pour it into my own like little, I have these little molds. Well, the pucks are about that big, so I'll do it myself. That's fine. Save a few bucks. I got this because I'm really curious about it. So I used to make a lot of beer soap, but I would do it by taking actual beer and like um, simmering it down. What's the, what's the word like? Just simmering it down, <laughs> whatever. I don't know how to say it, but turn it into like so you get all the carbonation out of it and all that stuff. So you're basically left with like a like a thick, a thicker, not really syrup. So it's not quite as thick as a syrup, but anyway. So I do that, and then I would freeze it into ice cubes, and then that's what I would use to make my lye solution. So then I would weigh out the cubes and then pour the lye on top of it, and the heat from the reaction would melt the cubes and prevent like the beer from burning. So. I'm curious about this beer powder. I, I'm thinking that you just put it straight in your oils and mix it that way instead of mixing it with your lye because otherwise, um, since it's not frozen, it'll probably burn it with all the, you know, kind of natural sugars that are in like beer solution. And uh, I'm actually kind of curious, well, and there's also maltodextrin, which will probably burn, but I am kind of curious. Um, I do have a freeze dryer, so I'm thinking maybe if I do my own beer, um, there's like some beers in the fridge that I don't really like and I want to put them to good use. So maybe I'll uh, simmer them down and, like I normally do and then freeze dry it and see if I can get beer powder. <clears throat> Alright, this is <laughs> really fun. Um, I love this part of it. So I am a fragrance junkie and this is <clears throat> my fragrance haul. Um, I have another fragrance, uh, a bigger version of it. Okay, <clears throat> this is my fragrance haul. Um, so, Wholesale Supplies Plus recently bought out a couple of vendors, um, smaller vend vendors online, and that would include Rustic Essentials, which is a company I've bought from in the past. And uh, I do like their fragrance oils, and uh, so that's why you you're seeing a difference here. So these, these come in glass. These are from Crafter's Choice. And then the ones from Rustic Essentials come in plastic. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the plastic because with fragrance oils, these are uh, in the chemical industry. They're called esters. 
and esters are made by um, basically, uh, what's the, let's see if I can put this in layman's term. So it's they're like distilled together, an alcohol and an acid. So in order to get that ester um, linkage, you do have uh, some acid and ester in there, or acid and alcohol in there, sorry. And uh, <clears throat> once you get your final product, there is, unless they have like a super high way of cleaning the product, um, there is some residual acid left in there. And so um, I, in, in ester itself, like the actual molecule ester, over time will degrade plastic. Um, it'll take a while to do it, but it's still, like if you ever have a fragrance oil in a plastic container and you leave it in there for like a couple years, if you open it up and try to smell it, you'll smell, it, it'll smell weird. Like there's a little bit of just weirdness to it. Um, and that's because the ester is like eating the inside of that plastic bottle. Now, while it won't like, like automatically just leak out the bottom or anything like that, um, it still is like eroding away that material. Now, I'm sure there's plastics out there that can withstand that sort of thing, but I have found that these particular bottles from um, Rustic Essentials don't really do that. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to pour these into a glass container. Um, I do have several, whenever I use up a uh, fragrance, I, I clean them out really well and um, use them again. So for, for instances like this, I don't want to waste anything. So, and, um, I have a specific way of cleaning them out too. So like once you clean them with soap and water, you let them kind of sit with a, with just salt, you just pour salt in there and the salt pulls all that extra stuff out of the, um, like off the sides and all that. And, uh, it works really well. So anyway, back to my haul. <laughs> so these four fragrances are from Rustic Essentials. Um, I was really excited about this teakwood and coconut. Um, and it does smell pretty good. <clears throat> Barbershop is very manly, um, but it's kind of got like a clovey smell to it as well. Alpine Frost is just like you would expect it to be. It smells like a Christmas tree. And then Velvety Vanilla. I was also excited about this because this is one of those kinds of fragrances that you can use as like a mixing base. So you can like take this if you want to make, you know, like a vanilla lavender or something like that. This is something that um, you can use to do that. Or you can use it on its own. The only thing with vanilla fragrances is that they uh, will turn soap very dark brown. I mean, like very dark brown <laughs> to where um, I've had some fragrances turn the soap so brown that when you use the soap, like the suds are brown. So, you know, keep that in mind if you ever decide to make soap and you want to do vanilla. Um, not all vanilla is that degree of brown. Um, it just depends on the concentration that's in the formula. I don't remember what's in this one, but it is one of those dark brown ones. So anyway, um, so I like to write the name of the fragrance on the top of the cap. So, cause the way I store it, I'm like looking down onto everything. So then I can just quickly grab. Um, I didn't do it for these cause I'm going to transfer them to other bottles. Berries and cream is an old fragrance I've had. I love this fragrance. Um, I can't describe it. It's just what it sounds like. Berries and cream. It's like tart, but like creamy at the same time. Very nice. It does discolor soap just a tad cause of the vanilla content. But, um, other than that, perfect. I've never had cucumber mint before, so I'm excited to try that. Um, lime mint. If you remember my peacock, uh, tutorial, I used lime mint in that and it did run a little fast, which I was not like expecting, but, uh, <clears throat> I guess that's kind of the coin flip that you, you know, take whenever you use a fragrance. Um, even if you know that it's like a really good behaving soap, there's that maybe that one time where it's going to surprise you. Um, stormy nights. I feel like I've used this before. Um, I don't remember because I've been doing this for gosh, 20 years or so. Um, so if I recall, it's a very ozone-y fragrance. Let me just take it a uh, whiff really quick. Oh, and you'll see this happen too. <laughs> like that, uh, that cone that protects the cap sometimes like sticks in there and that has a lot to do with the ester, uh, of the fragrance. So anyway, but yeah, so I have used this before and it does move a little fast. And so if you're just doing a single color soap, it's perfect. Even if you're just doing like a two color swirl, it's totally fine. Um, Rose behaves very well. I've done this before. I mixed this with pink grapefruit and uh, made a custom bar for my massage therapist and uh, she loved it. Um, so yeah, like a grapefruit rose. And this rose is like a very true to like, if you were just to cut a rose off the bush and smell it, or you don't have to cut it, but you know, if you were to smell a rose, that's what it smells like. It's like, it's not that heady perfumey kind of rose smell. It's like a very fresh and clean, like fresh green. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's perfect. So, uh, rose. So there's several rose fragrances on Wholesale Supplies Plus. This one is just rose. And you, I could see this being mixed with like vanilla as well. 
Caribbean coconut. So I made um, a bar soap a while back, and I may make it again because I loved it, um, called Johnny Utah, <laughs> based off the guy in uh, Point Break. And uh, it just, there's something about this fragrance that, like, I can't put my finger on. It's very nice. Gosh, it's, it's a very just fresh coconut smell. Now, it doesn't smell like, like if you were to crack open a coconut and smell it. It doesn't smell exactly like that. There's more of like a... I don't know, like a fruity undertone. I don't know how to describe it. It's very, it's very coconut. Don't get me wrong, but there's something else to it that just elevates it from just cracking open a coconut. Um, sage and citrus I've never used before. Um, yeah, I, this is the worst part. So they, they wrap all their, um, glass ones in this like tape, which is perfect because it keeps it from leaking. But yeah, so this is my first time smelling this. Oh, that reminds me of something. Um, I can't think about it. I can't think of what it is, but it reminds me of something I've smelled before. It smells good. Uh, so I'm excited to use that. Um, and from what I read on the website, it does behave well. So we'll see. Um, Irish spring. So I've used this before and this behaves very well. Um, and it smells just like the Irish spring soap. It's perfect. So usually I just like to have this around the house to have as like our, our bars of soap. Um, I might sell some eventually, but yeah, this smells really good. Um, I was excited for a green apple because, um, I love apple fragrances. I'm not a huge fan of apple. I mean, I'll eat apples, but I'm not like a huge fan, but I love the fragrance of like artificial apple. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. Um, that to me has like a kind of a candy undercurrent to it. Not can like, like sour green apple. But when I say candy, I mean like, uh, like caramel or something like that. Um, it is very fresh and green, but there's just a little bit of an undercurrent of caramel. Um, so watermelon mania, I got that too. I've never had this one either. I was just, I love watermelon smells as well. So I'm kind of curious about this one. Oh man, that smells just like a freaking watermelon candy. Um, that smells pretty good too. And it also apparently behaves very well. Now my last fragrance that I got, I got it in um, a big bottle because um, I use it a lot. It's this lemongrass green tea. And um, this is what I use to make my tea and biscuits soap. So, um, I'm restocked on it now. I've got plenty. Um, it's a relatively inexpensive fragrance and it smells so good and behaves so well that it's just, it's definitely worth it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so those are my fragrances. I don't really have much else that I hold. Um, I got more castor oil and then I bought, uh, I like to use this MCT oil to mix up my, um, colors. So I was using castor oil for a little while when I ran out of this. But uh, now I have it, and I'll go back to using that. The reason being is because it's a very neutral oil. It's basically the liquid form of coconut oil um, because they do something chemically to it to, like, extract the medium chain. And so that medium chain exists as a liquid at room temperature, whereas, like, regular coconut oil is solid at room temperature. So this is a very neutral oil. It doesn't smell like anything. Um, it doesn't taste like anything. Um, it's crystal clear, so, like, you're not going to taint it with any kind of color. So this is the canola oil I was using. It's got a little yellow tinge to it, but this is like crystal clear. So you won't have to worry about, um, coloring your, your color <laughs> with anything yellow or adding a warm hue to your color. Um, so anyway, um, that is my haul and this is like actually not typical of a, of my hauls, but I would say it's kind of typical of like a, maybe a small, very small, uh, soap making business. So I am also very, very, very small, um, I don't make a ton of sales in a year, um, but I experiment a lot and I love like playing with different fragrances and different colors and different, um, I do have a standard formula for soap that I like to play with, but like there's, I've experimented with those as well. Um, so yeah, this is, this was my haul and I took advantage of the president's day sale and this was it. So I hope you liked that. Oh, and another thing I was going to add too. Um, they made a mistake in my shipment and I freaked out for a moment because I ordered all these different colors. Um, I actually got this color, which I already own. It's Grays 50 Shades. It's just like a really dark gray. It's actually pretty much black, um, if we're going to be honest. But um, they sent me <laughs> four of them. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> At first I was kind of annoyed because I was like, did they not send me the fra the colors that I wanted and um, just sent me all these? And um, then I realized that they um, sent those in addition to all the colors that I ordered. So I was like, okay, well, <clears throat> I don't know if they want, I mean, I'll probably contact them and see if they want them back, but I don't know if, you know, some places are weird about that. So we'll see. 
But anyway, so that's it. I'll leave you to that. Um, and then I will see you in the next one. Bye.